Welcome to the Take the North podcast. I'm David Hoff from 670 The Score and the Mullane Haw Show. Adam Studzinski is our producer on the Take the North pod. Dan Wiederer making deadline for the Chicago Tribune out in Landover, Maryland at FedEx Field where the Bears beat the Commanders 40 to 20, just like Adam said they would pretty much by the book. What a victory for the Bears. 346 days since the last time they celebrated one. Justin Fields, DJ Moore, they were the story. DJ Moore, 230 receiving yards, eight catches, a career high. Justin Fields, four touchdown passes once again. This was an offense that came out pretty aggressively, and DJ Moore exploited everyone who tried to cover him, and the commander simply couldn't cover him. And the Bears, who have had their share of dysfunction and controversy and, and problems for the first four games, Put it all together tonight, Adam, and I think that at one point in time, I was with Al Michaels and everybody else watching. Who are these guys, right. and how in the world are they doing this? What was your initial reaction to everything that happened? Yeah, I – uh, I, well, first of all, it got a little stressful there, 10 points in the fourth quarter with uh, you know under nine minutes left or so, but it was – I felt – similar it's like who who are these guys and and where was this you know i know we saw some of it for you know the first three quarters against the broncos but it, this this team seems to be a little revived and it was such a a pressure release it felt like i felt like for this whole team to especially the the, the last touchdown of the game dj moore where the the pass that justin threw was just out of the reach of the defender's hands and there's no one behind him and dj moore takes it to the house and it seemed like Every collective, like everyone, like where that covers the Bears, that plays on the Bears, that's a fan of the Bears, just kind of took a sigh of relief. Like, oh, they're gonna get one. <laughs> like, they they didn't blow the lead. They're gonna they're gonna win this game, and and they get eleven. We everyone gets eleven days off to just kind of breathe. And and who that's what it felt like for me. The whole yeah, thing was just a sigh it. of relief. It was a sigh of relief, and it was on an emotional night because obviously before kickoff, the Bears mourn the passing of an NFL legend, one of the greatest players in franchise history, Dick Butkus, passes away at the age of 80. The team confirmed the report just a couple hours before they, they began the game against the Commanders. Cast a pall over everything that happened at FedEx Field. I mean, he received a, a video uh, tribute, as you would expect. There was there were tributes in Chicago at the Blackhawks preseason game. Um, this is a loss of an icon, one of the more defining players the Bears have ever uh, had the privilege of of, uh, of having, you know, wear their uniform. And I, I don't I don't see necessarily a, a tight connection between what happened on the field and, and the and the passing of a legend, but I do think that it just spoke to just how much emotion was packed into the performance of McCaskey's obviously there. George McCaskey issued a statement um, about what did Butkus meant to the franchise. And, and Adam, I think that obviously um, that that's a, a separate story, but I think it just, it, it was, it was one of the things was, as I watched Matt Eberflew's post game and, and it dawned on me he, as he was ex expressing his condolences to the family, how much he has been through Man. this week, this month, because the first four games were forgettable and you saw the stress begin to mount. And let's face it, uh, as he took this to the sidelines tonight, there were people wondering if this would be his last game as the coach of the Chicago mm -hmm. Bears. And after tonight, I think we can pretty well, or at least he can rest assured that he's not getting fired tomorrow. What does it mean beyond that? We'll wait and see. Mm -hmm. But the Bears did what they needed to do, kept their focus, and on an emotional night, they played with the desperation that they needed to bring. They definitely did. and. Yeah, you said it. I don't know if anyone involved with this team needed that win more than Matt Eberflus did after you said the week that he had. I mean, you know, four short days of all of a sudden everyone's speculating about his job status and and is he going to be, like, as you were alluding to, like, is he going to be fired if they lose this game and they don't look good? Look, don't, and, and they lose it handily, I should say. Right. So, <clears throat> I mean, he needed it, man. Justin Fields needed it. You could see how how happy he seemed. DJ Moore, like everyone, everyone on this team, like they needed this win so badly. And now they can go into this nice little break. They got some injuries that they need to recover from. It, you know, it's good that Tevin Jenkins got back on the field tonight. 
And but you know, Roshan Johnson ended up in concussion protocol. Their their defensive backfield just kept taking more and more depth hits. And I do want to uh, I, I'll talk a little bit about Dick Buckus as we go on here before we close out. But it, 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 I did think, and I actually tweeted out before the game, like they can't lose tonight, right? It, it, right. And I know that it's just anecdotal, and it doesn't really ha- the two things are just aren't connected. But it's like you can't you can't lose this game. Not well, I, yeah, I, I think that's fair to, to to point that out, and I, you know, I, we we say that, and and I I say that because I don't think either one of us or nobody wants to take away from what the Bears maybe did in terms of focusing mm-hmm. on the task at hand, and 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 kind of maybe say well it was all because of the, the emotions that they felt. I think both things can be true. They were probably affected more by by Dick Butkus's passing than any other. Uh, team that was, you know, in, in the league, certainly in right. any uh, of the two teams tonight. Uh, I, I'm sure Ron Rivera had a heavy heart. He knew Dick mm-hmm. Butkus from their days at the end of Ron's career in Chicago. And Dick Butkus was the analyst at WGN and they, they struck up a friendship. And uh, I can, I can remember that there was a time a couple of years ago when the, the Panthers were making a Super Bowl run. I remember Dick Butkus telling this story to one of the times I interviewed him and, and Ron asked him to speak to the team. Uh, and it was when Cam Newton was the quarterback and, and mm. Butkus was like, what am I going to say to Cam Newton? You know, <laughs> and, and he declined it, but, but it just spoke to how, how That's close funny. their relationship was. And, and I know that probably Ron Rivera had a heavy heart tonight, but I think that, yeah, I mean, whatever it was that you're right. You didn't get a sense. This wasn't, a, you didn't want to lose on the night. The, the, the fiercest player in team history passed away because you wanted to stand up and be, you know, I, as, a, as a franchise that probably wanted to, to be able to have a good feeling going to bed tonight. And I think they certainly can. A couple of things that stood out to me, you mentioned uh, DJ Moore and, and um, Justin Fields. That'll get a lot of attention. I did think though, Lucas Patrick left the game. Uh, Tevin Jenkins hadn't played and hadn't had an ounce of contact since the practice in Indianapolis. Right. Cody Whitehair slides over to center. That offensive line against the front four that we all talked about coming in was to be feared and respected. That offensive line of the Bears played pretty well tonight. And I they think did. that you can't overlook that as being a big factor why there was a comfortable pocket. It was clean most of the time. And Justin Fields had time and made good use of it. He definitely, yeah. I, I don't think you can walk away with this game and not point to the way the Bears offensive line played. You're, as you said, you're, you're going to look at Justin Fields and DJ Moore and the numbers they put up. But three sacks allowed, and honestly, like that is a good mark for this team. And a couple of them you could probably say were, you know, maybe Justin could have gotten rid of the ball. And actually there was a couple times that Justin did get rid of the ball. Maybe one of them should have been intentional grounding, but – you know, this team has needed some luck and they finally got a little bit. And when it comes to that kind of thing, I guess it, and I it's, it's weird, but Tevin Jenkins, excuse me, Lucas Patrick leaving the game. I thought to myself, I feel like the line's better without him. And, you know, you don't want that to happen because of an injury. And I know that, like you said, Tevin Jenkins has been, you know, hasn't had any contact in over well over a month. And, but the offensive line is just better with Cody Whitehair at center and Tevin Jenkins at left guard. And you'll have to go back and look at the film a little bit more to see how they actually individually performed, but you know, only giving up three sacks to in all we talked about all week was how good this defensive line is and they allowed three sacks. So that's the offensive line is definitely to be like a a huge to be commended after that kind of effort. And I mean, they were, they were a huge reason for the win. Yeah, we didn't hear Larry Borm's name that much, and you expect to hear it no. often if he's going against no. that that defensive front. And there was at I least think, I I, I want to say he allowed at least Chase Young got loose on him at least once, but other he's, than that, he's Chase Young, you know, he, yeah, he's going to yeah. do that against the best of offensive tackles. Yeah. I, I think a couple unsung unsung heroes, you know, while while we talk about Moore and Fields, but uh, obviously Tevin Jenkins coming back and contributing in a way that was meaningful. Kerry Blasting game. The three running backs went down. He had to carry the ball eight times. Right. I think that's more than he had ever in his career in terms of career carries. Kerry Blasting game, the fullback for the Bears, of people that forgot that. But he had to step up because three running backs were unavailable. Khalil Herbert left after having a pretty good uh, productive day. 
uh, Roshan Johnson out with uh, protocol and uh, Travis Homer was knocked out with an injury. And then Don, Deontay Foreman didn't dress. He was inactive. So you had your only choice was Justin Fields or the fullback. So <laughs> the fullback got eight carries and, and, and helped the Bears eat the clock because I do think Getze did get a little bit conservative again. You started to see that mm-hmm. lead dwindle and then they threw the pass to DJ Moore. And he, he went up against Kendall Fuller, grabbed it away from him, and then he ran away from everybody. And that was the key. DJ Moore made two uh, cornerbacks uh, have sleepless nights because yeah. the rookie first rounder left the game, got benched after DJ Moore did a number on him, uh, Forbes, Manuel Forbes. Yeah. And then uh, Kendall Fuller tried to make a play on the ball, and DJ Moore made him pay. So. The Bears had everything going for them offensively. You have to for this group to score 40 points. Yeah, absolutely. And, and real quick, yeah, Kurt, Kurt Blasting Game had three total carries in his career oh, wow. before this game. So, <laughs> yeah, he really had to step up. And it's it's really good that the Bears do have as much time off as they do to get uh, Herbert healthy. And hopefully Roshan Johnson gets through concussion protocol. You do have Deontay Foreman waiting if you need him but uh, you know it's, you said he's inactive for this game so you couldn't use him and then you know uh, what i i really liked the aggressiveness of the game plan where it almost seemed like we don't think that you can cover dj Moore, so we're gonna keep throwing to him exactly and that was what it was and yeah. it was it, it really was like hey like if we can get enough time up front from our offensive line dj Moore is gonna eat against these guys and here you have a career day and one of the best days by a receiver in Bears history. He had 126 yards at the end of the first quarter, which has to be a Bears record. If it's not, I'll be shocked. Like that was I saw that stat and I was blown away. Like I've I don't think I've it's never happened in my lifetime. If it has, I forgot about it. I think it was the second most prolific receiving day since Alshon Jeffrey had maybe yes. 247. Yeah. Um so he was pretty close to that one catch away. So the offense did what it needed to do. Colt Komet is emerging as a really good safety valve Mm -hmm. uh, that Justin Fields trusts. I think he only completed three passes um, or used three different receivers. Darna Mooney didn't really connect. He he missed him a couple times, and I think that's not Mm -hmm. uh, Mooney's fault. But Justin Fields overall had a pretty good day. Um, Maybe would like to be a little bit more efficient with the completion percentage, but he was hitting the big plays. and. His passer rating was really high. I want to touch on a couple of defensive guys because I think it's it's worth pointing out. Andrew Billings, I thought, came up big for them. I mean, literally and figuratively. Yeah. But Andrew big Billings, boy. he was pretty good against the run. Um, Demarcus Walker was active. Yannick and Gakwe both had sacks. I thought that was something to watch. Obviously, they were playing with the lead. You don't see that very often if you're a bare defensive lineman. So they <laughs> took advantage of that. Um you saw Rasheem Green get a sack. Uh, mm-hmm. Felt like T.J. Edwards had ten tackles. That was that was a career high, or I'm sorry, a, a, t- a game high for mm-hmm. T.J. Edwards. And then the secondary, you're playing without three starters and guys like Greg Stroman Jr., who was drafted by the Commanders um, in 2018 in the seventh round. Terrell Smith had the forced fumble, um, but Stroman and Smith aren't guys that you typically go into right. a game on national television expecting to count on. Those guys came through in a big way, and that secondary played like a group that's pretty well coached. They did, and you know, you want to go back to Matt Eberflus. Like, he – not only did he need to win, he needed his defense to have a game like this. And, and yep. you know, the, the commanders are, are far from a finished product on offense. They have, you know – a good receiving core, but a really young quarterback offensive line that isn't quite finished off. So, you know, it's, it's nothing to say like, Hey, it's a huge corner turned, but it's progress. And they needed to show that they could stop a heck, just stop a young quarterback and turn the ball over a couple times, which is something that they haven't been able to do. Heck that interception by Stroman was the first I said, it's the first real turnover for the Bears of the season because the right. only other turnovers they'd forced were in the second half against the backup quarterback against the Chiefs, which count in the stat book, but didn't really count as far as an impact on the season. So that that was huge. And, you know, you want to talk about playing complimentary football. That's it right there. Force turnovers and, and score touchdowns. And good things are going to happen. And finally. 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 You know, they fi- and they finally get a bit of luck, too. That missed field goal. Yep. 
by the commanders that really was the end of the game. I, you know, DJ Moore scored the touchdown to seal it, but at that point, five minutes to play, 10 points, something crazy is going to happen if you're going to lose that one. And so that was, that was like, fine, like, finally, like this team needed something. I was joking with on the, on the afternoon or on the midday show on the score uh, just the other day, might've been yesterday saying like, they need like this team needs the other team to make a mistake to find a way to win. <laughs> it's like that's that's like the kind of point we're at. And finally, they got a little bit of luck. They changed. Uh, I don't know if they changed the direction of their season, but they, they changed the subject. And, and that yeah. is significant on a on a week that we were talking about what they were going to do if they lost the main, this game in terms of the, the main coach. topic at Hall Hall tomorrow won't be Matty Rufus's job. Yep, nobody's going to lose their job after yeah. tonight. Let's quickly give out a couple game balls um, because we can actually do that the first time in yeah. 346 yeah, that's days. Right. <laughs> we're talking about a victory. So how about yeah. that? Who would get your game ball? I, I don't know. I, I I don't know how you don't give it to DJ Moore in this one. I, I mean, an all-time Bears receiver day, not that far away, like you said, to the, the, the single game record, eight catches, 230 yards, three touchdowns, and, you know, the touchdown that – put it away and heck he should have had more than that there that one four. that what yeah, yeah that one that one that they marked him out of bounds right on the, running right. down the the far sideline from the t on the tv broadcast i don't know if he was out of bounds he probably would have scored there so he should have had you know maybe 30 40 more receiving yards besides that so i mean he he showed today like yeah that's that's why they gave up the number one pick to get that guy that's it's cool when the, you trade for a guy that produces like he has since they decided, hey, we should target him after ignoring him in the opener. That's right, and real, right, and real quick, I did see this after the game. Justin Fields has a perfect passer rating when targeting DJ Moore this season. I, I know. 158.3. That is crazy. <laughs> and he's, he's very efficient, like 531 yards, and so he's got a perfect rating. I would right. keep going to him. If yeah. that's the case, that's the good things are going to yeah. happen. If the you game know, plan is throw it to DJ Moore, I'm not going to complain about <laughs> it. So that's a good one. I, I think that I'm going to go with my game ball. I'm going to give it to I'm going to give it to the head coach. I think Matt Eberflus <laughs> took a lot of criticism this week, and I, a lot of it was deserved because obviously the Bears start 0 4, and he didn't handle the Chase Claypool situation um, very well. I, I was glad to get done with my column on 670 to score, and I don't think I typed the word Chase Claypool. I, I think finally there was. Again, changing the subject, changing the direction. And Matt Eberflus, you know, he's been clumsy at the podium and in handling perception. And there have been a lot of things that have been worthy of criticism. But I got to give him credit on, on this Thursday night. This team arrived focused. They were ready to play. The first half was exactly what you want from a team on the road. Commanders are a pretty good team. They, that, that's, that's the same commanders team that gave the Eagles all they could handle last week. Right. And here the Bears come into their building and they played with a sense of urgency that, frankly, Ron Rivera's team didn't match. So yeah. I'll give Matt Eberflus credit tonight. I'll give him my game ball because they got he got the most out of his team. And when you can maximize the potential of a team that doesn't have as much talent as the team that just beat 40 to mm -hmm. 20, that that's a coaching victory. And, and I give him a lot of credit for that. Yeah, that's you know, that's a good one, too. I, I'm glad that I'm glad you thought of uh, thought of that, because that's. Like we said a couple of times, he needed that more than anyone. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, <laughs> overall, I know you enjoyed it, but what, that was fun to watch a game where you weren't yeah. like, oh boy, how are we going to describe this loss? How do we get to oh, describe man. this breakdown? At some it was, point, it was like, whoa, this is actually happening. Yeah. And, you know, after that, uh, DJ Moore, the last DJ Moore touchdown to put the game away, I. I sent I sent out this tweet, but it's like it felt like at the end of Shawshank Redemption, where he <laughs> crawled out of the the tunnel and he's in the rain and it's all falling down on him. Like that's what it felt like. It's like oh, <laughs> finally, finally, <laughs> finally, finally is right. Well, the Bears win forty to twenty. Dan is making deadline, and and we'll get this out right away. Just for programming note, um, obviously at the weekend we'll adjust our pod schedule. But people that listen to six seventy to score, DJ Moore is scheduled to be on with us at 8 o'clock Friday morning on the Mullion Haw Show. He is a guest every Monday morning after games, but since they play on a Thursday, he said he confirmed with Dustin Rhodes All last right. time he was on Monday, he's going to be on on Friday. So let's hope that he gets up and he still is having as much fun as he was having tonight. So anything else, Adam, before we wrap things up? I don't think so. I guess, uh, I guess. well, since we're, since we're, we're, 
plugging things, Jaquan Brisker will be on the midday show, Bernstein and Holmes, uh, scheduled to be, assuming he did come out of the game totally healthy at 1030 in the morning on on Friday. And also, I did, you know, obviously, I just want to say real, really quick, condolences to the Buckus family. Dick Buckus, I, I have, you can't really tell, but this picture above me is a picture that my grandpa gave me when I was first getting into football, when I was in seventh grade of Dick Buckus. He says, you got to play like this guy. Like this guy will kick the out of you. So <laughs> he had uh, that. So that was kind of one of those just things that I always carried with me. And yeah. uh, as a football player that, you know, I never got to see him play in person, but that I really admired and I never got to meet him in person. I never got to meet him, but uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really, that one hit me. That one hit me. And I think it hit every Bears fan yeah. or every every Bears observer. I, you know, you're that's a that's a great story, and I'm sure your grandpa has great memories. Um, I was fortunate, as I said, to to um, to to meet him, to interview him a couple different times, a couple different venues. The most extensive one was when I was at the Tribune, and we were doing a show there in the seventh floor um, of the radio studio, and he was giving out the uh, he was giving out the the Dick Butkus Award. So he came on and mm-hmm. spent spent. Uh, about 30 minutes with us. And the night before, though, we were doing Sports Talk Live uh, at the time at, at the NBC Sports Chicago now in, in over in the Holiday Inn building. And he was a guest with Dave Kaplan, myself, Dick Butkus, and and uh, Luke Keekley. And Luke Keekley came oh, to wow. town, uh, the former Panthers linebacker. Mm-hmm. Luke Keekley came to town thinking that he was doing uh, some appearances with Butkus and Dick Butkus surprised Luke Keekley on live TV <laughs> um, with the Dick Butkus Award for the NFL oh, linebacker. That's really cool. And the thing of it was not necessarily him giving him the award. It was that Dick Butkus, this big, fierce epitome of toughness linebacker who mm-hmm. defined a generation for Bears fans, got such a kick out of surprising Luke Keekley. He thought it was <laughs> the greatest, funniest thing, and he thought it was the greatest surprise. And Hey, he didn't know when I got him in here, and I was kidding him, and and it was just a lot of fun. And that's the that's kind awesome. of guy that he was. And um, he he will be he will be sorely missed. And there'll be a mourning period for the Bears family. And and we, um, you know, that makes it all all the better that they won tonight and on a night that was very emotional for everyone. So we'll wrap things up. It's late. Right. Got to get up. And uh, thanks for hanging in here with us, guys. Uh, like I said, we'll be back with Dan Wiederer when he gets back from uh, D.C. And Adam Sadinsky, our producer. I'm David Haw. Thanks for listening to the Take the North podcast on your free Odyssey app. We'll talk to you next time. 